The radial filter is new to Camera 8, as comes with Photoshop CC. And in this movie, I want to show you a couple of ways that you can work with this new adjustment. So to begin with, let's select the radial filter from up here in the bar. And you can see over here on the right, here are the radial filter adjustment controls. And these are exactly the same as those you would get for working with, say, the graduated filter tool, starting with the basic panel type of adjustment controls up here, sharpness and noise reduction, etc. And at the bottom, the ability to decide whether you want to apply an effect from the inside outwards or from the outside inwards, as well as a feather control. So to apply an adjustment, if you just you just simply click on an image and drag, and if you want to reposition it, hold down the space bar, and this allows you to decide exactly where you want to place the effect in an image. Release both the mouse and the space bar, and you can see here is the effect positioned on the screen. And if I click on one of these handles, it's possible to adjust the shape so that you can create an, uh, the desired uh, elliptical shape here. And move the cursor outside and you can click and rotate to adjust it that way as well. Now, at the moment, it's applying an adjustment from the inside outwards where the green pin in the middle represents the point of maximum effect and the red dotted line circumference represents the point of no effect. And if I want to switch that around, I can just simply click on the outside button and then you can see that the pin in the center changes from green to red. So the red is the point of no effect and then the green outline here is the point of maximum effect and also beyond. And a shortcut you can use here is to use the X key so that if you press X, this will switch back to the inside outward mode. X again goes to the outside mode and back again. If I press down on the caps lock key, then you can see this dotted gray line, which helps you visualize the midpoint for the feather. And then by adjusting the feather amount here, you can, de you can decide just how much feathering you want to apply to the effects that you're uh, creating. And then if I hold down the Alt key, this changes to a scissor icon so that you can click to delete individual adjustments, or you can just use the delete key if you prefer. Now, another thing you can do here is to double click anywhere in the image, and this automatically applies an adjustment which goes from the center to the outer document bound edges. And let me just go and release the caps lock key, key here so we don't have to see that visualization there of the feather. And um, this doesn't just apply to creating new effects. If I perhaps adjust the shape here with any uh, radial filter adjustment, if you just double click on it, it will automatically do the same thing as well. Let me just press the X key so that I can reverse that and then adjust the exposure so that I'm gonna take that down so I can create a darkening uh, vignette for the uh, for this image and then it's not just the exposure slider you can work with you've got all these other controls here as well so for example if I wanted to also play around with the saturation I could perhaps take the saturation down and then if I drag on the handles here I can just move the position again and so I can perhaps create an adjustment where I'm centering everything just around the windmill and everything outside of it from the center outwards the effect becomes stronger. So there you go, that's one example of how to work with it. Now there's another image example I have here as well. So let me just click to go and select this. And uh, in this particular instance, um, this is a photograph that was shot using the Sony RX100 camera, which I've been working with quite a lot recently. And it does take really good photographs and has the benefit of not just being compact and lightweight, but also shoots in raw mode. But one of the things that could be considered a downside is that there is sometimes a noticeable lack of sharpness towards the uh, edges of the, of the frame. So this is a case of where I think it's ideal to work with the radial filter. If I just double click to apply a new adjustment and then reset the sliders here from where they were for the last adjustment. And in this instance, I'm just going to play around with the sharpness. And I think it will help perhaps if we zoom in on the corner down here so that we can see more clearly what's going on. So here's a 100% view of the image. And um, if I take the sharpness up to around about uh, 60% and then show you the effect of before and after, this is the before without any sharpness. This shows you the fall off at the edges of the frame. And then this is with the extra sharpening that's applied. So using this particular method, let me just go back to the fit to view. 
it would be possible to create an adjustment that can then be applied to correct for lack of edge sharpness in uh, pictures where, where necessary. So not necessary, ne necessary perhaps with uh, photographs taken with your prime lenses, but perhaps with less ideal objectives, you might find it a useful tip. So that concludes this movie, in which I've shown you a couple of examples of how to work with the new radial filter. I think you'll agree it's a really useful new addition to have in Camera Raw 8.